going to bring in Michael. I come. I come, beloved beings, to come forth to you to deliver what is called that of a message, a teaching, so that it can assist you to be able to stand more firmly on your rainbow bridge. No, beloved souls, there is so much now that is happening upon your world as well as throughout all that are the spheres of the universe and universes. This is a magnificent time, even though that of the duality, that of the illusion of the world that you are in, appears to be not so. I want to speak to you only for a moment about what is called that of the conclave. For I asked my oracle to give what she has just given unto you. The conclave for this moment of time is when you have that of the ability to be able to meet, that means all that of the counterparts, all those aspects of yourself, refractualizations, meet with the Christ. There are many, many conclaves, beloved Zoom, and there are many conclaves that do take place throughout that of the year. For many different, um, what you call that of the availability that would be of the necessary when it is called forth. Conclaves are when that of the Great One calls all together. There are even those of the conclaves when even those of lower nature by way of what is called that of the negative or lower force, is also called to the conclave with that of light. However, when this conclave meets the source, its evidence, creates what is called that of a shield. Just think of a grand, magnificent, circular room. Very, very huge, size of a galaxy. And that these are now meeting all aspects of those souls. Now that of the wall that is placed in between has to be for that of the source. Listens to that of the lower nature as well as those of light. I will not go too much into that the explanation of that this night because I just wanted to let you know there are many conclaves but this the by way of the Easter time, is very important for the collective consciousness of your world. The conclave, beloved soul, if the wall was not there when light and dark meet, if the wall was to be of the uplifting, everything would immediately go back into oneness. That's why it must be in that way. It is a magnificent thing, the tapestry of spirit, the tapestry of whom and what you be in your human form. And what you are doing in this world is also as magnificent. I spoke to you about what you call that of the December, the 21st of the 12th. And when this configuration comes forth to that of the spheres and that of your galaxy and solar system, that this then will create what is called the solar cross, which I have also spoke to you of. This vibratory uh, frequency will have a ripple effect. It will go throughout that of all of the spheres of the universe and even universes. And what occurs, beloved soul, in this solar cross, it is the time of change. It is also birthing what is called the edge of Aquarius. Even though, I must say to you, for your linear thinking, that yes, this configuration is occurring, and it is stimulating that of the edge of Aquarius into the being of the noun. But it has already begun 
in some ways for you to think about because Aquarius is the age, beloved soul, of what is called that of the electrical, fire, the sun, high levels of technology, humanitarian efforts, ideology, non-conformity, and far more. Perseverance, and humility, rebellion, nervous disorders. But it's coming now into what is called, like what one calls in that the numeral, for those that pay attention to the number system of your birthday. In that of October, it begins the new year, but it doesn't become exact until January. That is when it becomes in its strength. And that is what's happening now at the end of your year in December. Now the edge of Aquarius is becoming very exact into that of its strength for the purposes of your world and throughout the universe. The edge of Aquarius from the ancients of old was also considered to be the beginning of a golden age. It's very electrifying, very electromagnetic, and it's the power of the sun, computers, and what you call the computer software, all that are the technical aspects of these things that are now working in your world, negatively and positively. It also rules and creates what is called the vibration also of the solar, but it's called the flares that you are also beginning to have more of um, the solar rays and the power grids, the power grids in your world, and the power grids through the invisible ley fields and the ley lines throughout what is called that of space and time. Simply think of it in a minute way of your world and your solar system. Very difficult to be able to comprehend the massiveness of the soul of billions and billions of solar systems. The edge of Aquarius is a magnificent time. And yes, beloved soul, there is positive and negative. Just as I said to you about what is called that of oh, the solar cross, it created that of a path. But you're going to have to choose to go to the right or you're going to have to go to the left. The right is the positive, the left is the negative. Light, dark, doesn't matter. What it means, there is a crossroads of change. And that it will continue to speak to you more on the paths and what that means. The Aquarius is also futuristic. It is all that of um, cultural and newer levels of civilizations. But also, the people can also become more detached, impersonal. That is why it is beginning to happen, it has been happening to where you cannot communicate person to person any longer in the world because of this vibration that has been coming in. Yes, the rebellion, and yes, there are the nervous of the disorders. But also there's going to be through this magnificent age in the positiveness also more space travel, a visitation by way of that of the space crafts or modes of travel, wheels of mechanization, UFOs, USOs, it doesn't matter. There's just going to be more and more activity through that world. No longer will there be one that will say that it is not so. So what I want to begin with, beloved soul, is to give you also an understanding of the magnificence of Aquarius. In the ancient of the old, Aquarius was ruled by what is called the planet called Saturn. And Saturn is the ancient ruler, but Saturn is the controller. It's also very restrictive. It's a taskmaster. It's going to make one learn what they have come to learn in order to be able to succeed in their destiny. They must learn what they have come to learn by way of many different levels of discipline. But also, it is now ruled in the modern understanding of the consciousness I am speaking to you of, is Uranus. And it is magnificent of what I just spoke to you of. It is very important, beloved souls, because of the technology that is here already and will be coming even more. 
You must learn, beloved beings, not to fall prey to the illusion. You're a star seeds, starlights, star children, sun dancers, illuminators, emissaries. You are those that chose to come to be here right now. So you are learning to tap inside once again and to find that place where you hold this physical body. I know that is not easy. It's easy in words. It's not always easy to live or to apply to one's life every day. You cannot fall prey to delusion because meaning uh, to the words that are being sent out by way of the manipulation of thought or through the media. The propaganda is to mentally instill fear, and that is what is happening, in particular in what is called um, your nation and others. It's to instill fear and to sway oh, the majority of people by way of its thought implantations. That's rather what one would call that of uh, a hypnosis. It hypnotizes people by way of the constancy, the persistency of over and over. This is your commercials, your media, uh, what is called billboards. It doesn't matter. It's a constant, it's repetitious. The repetitious programs the mind and then it programs the subconscious. And so you must be very awake and very alert and become more and more. That is why you are learning, beloved souls, to come back home while you still hold this physical, mental, emotional body. You are learning, beloved souls, to be able to simply transmute, transform, transcend these things by the power of how you are learning to use your mind, your mind over matter. The edge of Aquarius is magnificent. I have said to you to give you an understanding of the left path. Yes, it's negative. Yes, it's lower nature. Yes, it is by way of those souls that choose it because they have not yet grown into another avenue of awareness or awakening or there are those too. There are old souls that choose not to come into life. Then the magnificence of the positive. You must, beloved soul, hold the positive. Feel the positive. You are learning to instantaneously have the realization when you have that of a thought drop that is just instantly come to your mind that's negative to immediately erase it. The more and more and more that you do that, the better and better and easier it is going to be for you to be able to continue down the path of life and not buy in to everything in the illusional world because you are going to find that you're going to have the answers, the inspiration, the direction, the guidance from this magnificent source, this voice that is with you, always is with you. You're simply learning how to tap into it to hear it. And by hearing it, you must meditate, meaning quiet yourself doesn't mean that you have to silence your mind at all. Some meditation is that you sit and you're quiet. Yes, the outside what is called that of the, the scattering of words and what was going on or what you're going to do tomorrow or what you haven't done today, to quiet that mind, but to hear the voice of spirit to come in and to speak to you. Like I also speak to my oracle when we are in that of the quietude. I speak to her also in many ways throughout one's day. And you have yours, meaning your guardians, your magnificent councils within councils, you have all of these precious beings that are so diligently working with you, in particular in these moments of time, because, no, they are not easy, but they can be easier. It is up to you, beloved soul, and how your perception of the world is going to be, your world, not the world of illusion, your world, the world that you have within you. That is what is important. I want to give you a little bit of an understanding of how this began long ago and where you are in this moment. A little bit of what you term history. Long ago, beloved soul, there was a planet and it was once located in what is called your asteroid belt. No. 
no longer planetary. This was called Maldek, and I heard talk about this before, the Maldekians. They were in oneness in the beginning, and then they began to shift. And in their shift, you know, so there were those that did not agree with what was happening, but were simply called the controllers, those that were in that of the power to oversee those of those citizens. So, what I want you to know is Earth has become as the planet at Maldek once was. That will give you the understanding of that. When those then did not agree what was occurring by the utilization of what is called the loss of free will and choice by what is called the controllers of the government at that time, because of the way they were implementing the programs of controlling its citizens, the major way of controlling also people in the all worlds, beloved Zoom, is to take out what is the most important for them, and it's simply shelter, water, and food. They began scientific experimentations with the crystal ship. These are chip devices. Remember, these were telepathic beings. They were celestial beings. They were physical, etheric celestial beings. Not like you are today. They telepathically communicated. And some of these Maldekians did not want to abide by what is called that old the Galactic Federation, holding the law of one. The Galactic Federation is like what you call your United Nations, so to speak. So they went against it. They began taking what is called some of the magnificent chargers, magnificent crystals. These are fire crystals. And they began to disrupt, rearrange, change, take part, to break up the grid system, not only of travel, but also of communication, telepathically. They did not want to be a part any longer of the oneness. They wanted to do what it was they thought was right in the controlling of their people. They had the ability to create what is called that of um, a militia, or what you call military, or enforcer. And how this was done was simply they created robotroids. They instilled also what is called that of um, the crystal chip, which was called the chips of implantation, which would also incarcerate or control many of those beings. To control people or any being or any world or civilization against their will is spiritually corrupt. Oh, beloved beings, when a government, which I call controllers of any domain, are instilling their ways to control people, to bend to their ways of thinking, by way of force or brutality, even in the incarceration of taking away their free will and free choice because they will not abide by what they have asked them to do. This is not correct. This is not a part that of the universal law. The universal law is free will and free choice. I'm speaking to you of the controllers that take over and take away all freedom. One must abide by the natural universal laws, free will and free choice. I know there are many, beloved soul, that are now happening in your world. If you look at your world and you look at the technology, it is very similar. You look at your controllers, your government, it is similar. Now, do not mistake what it is I'm saying to you. There are still very good people that are working in those positions that do not agree with what is going on. But because that of your nation 
is so divided and is becoming more and more divided, more unrest. It is important to remember, beloved soul, it is simply the maldecking vibration. But let me continue forward. The Maldekians then that did not agree began to leave because ultimately the Maldekians destroyed their planet by way of what is called that of the misuse of the fire tongue crystals and the fire crystals, the chargers. Those that left beloved soul were placed in many of the planetary systems. Ones that you know or understand such as Pisces, and Bhutis, Venus, Andromeda, Arcturus, Nazareth, and many more. Then later there was a meeting again of the Federation as to where are they going to put these wayward, or that, or the children. And they agreed that it would be sent to Earth. Now they came forth, and they came as what is called that old now Lemuria. They did not agree what was happening by way of the lack of the free will and free choices. So there was a law of one, of course, at the beginning of Lemuria. But then again, once again, the negativity began to come up. And there were those then that chose not to continue forward in the law of one, and they begin to split. These are the Atlanteans. The Atlantis, beloved soul, were also the Maldekians. So, now, let us look at Atlantis. Atlantis is magnificent in that of um, the beginning of it. It wasn't as, but to say, the controlling. The law of nature was working. They also had the mind manipulators and restrictions. They had what is called the political controllers. But they also had, before this went to, I'm speaking to you, just before they destroyed, again, Atlantis. In the beginning, they had what is called many provinces or like you have um, countries, um, cities. Most important, Andal, Ur, Poseidon. All of these have magnificent ways when they utilize what is called education, the vibration of the aeronautics, working what is called out of the Vimonic ships, which is the wheels of mechanization to travel. And they did go to and fro working out of the ingress and the egress systems. They traveled and journeyed. They had magnificent historical. They had what is called the global communicators, the philosophers, great temples of learning and knowledge. They had the healings and form one. But then there began to be such an unrest, and the controllers began to take over taking control of its people. The misuse of the fire crystals. Mountains chose to replace and reset the crystals in various locations as well that caused damage because the ingress and egress or the vibration of how they were to be placed and where they were able to live in that of the world of Earth. That time was called Sean and also to control the exiting and the entering of its planet. They would not allow others to leave. They were controlling them, imprisoning them, incarcerating them. They also created them with experiencing, of course, cloning. They did them out there. And you are also in your world as well the clothing to have what is called through military experiences, to have the perfect army, the clothing of what is called the perfect race, the workings are very similar to what is happening into that of your world now as to what has happened. 
in the time of Maldoc, in the time of Atlantis. They placed crystal splinters. This is like the fire crystal splinters. They were like very, very small needles into the various areas of the brain by way of ear to ear to block out communication. It was just simply a way to impress the mind so they could not think. It imprisoned the mind. And one could not process thought out. All it could be would be with itself. So it was an imprisonment for those that did not agree with the controllers. They would do some of these things in order for the others not to telepathically teach, school, give assistance, in order to be able to learn how to break away from the vibration of the control. So many, many beloved souls of those of the Marians that also were in the vibration of Atlantis at that time. The Marians are Atlantis, the Atlanteans are the Marians. But the Lemurians then did not agree, and they too then left and created another civilization, of course, of which I have spoke much about, which is called early Egypt. But what I want you to understand, Earth is as Maldek, Atlantis, was. Now think about it, beloved souls. You have the Atlantean vibration. Many of here are Atlanteans in your world. Think of your scientists and what they are doing. The ones that are misusing, you say, the vibration of the working. Learning and wanting to clone, wanting to create different controlling devices. This is why I speak of those scientists. There are many scientists that are magnificent and are going to come into more and more of what is called they in the Lemurian energy. So when you look out through that of your world, it even began at the very beginning upon Sean, upon that of the Urs, the Red Man, Adon. These were those celestials. And as they then began to go through history and time, you could tell the difference between what was called that of the Lemurians and the Lanteans. The Lemurian energy are those of you that are seeking so diligently to want to bring your gifts and your talents and your abilities into mankind by your mere demonstration of being who you be and therefore assisting, be it in healing or technology or education or mathematics or architecture or music. Creativity, the art, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is you are in those abilities and talents, beloved soul, is who you are in your demonstration to bring happiness, to bring joy, to teach others, to be able to unfold and develop spiritually. First and foremost, by your demonstration. And then, of course, for those who choose, they go further in the teachings but even those individually teach by those they meet. Cheramon technology. So what I'm saying to you, if you look for us out of your world, you will see the lower nature, but you will also see, and I'm not saying all lower nature is that of the Lantean. These are old souls that have chose not to shift or to change, but hold those same endeavors of thinking, to misuse power, greed, control, confinement, imprisonment. You'll see it through different levels of technology and how one is choosing to use it to assist, to inspire, to be able to bring more knowledges in from the higher worlds, to be able to help you to what is called such as like the Noor, the Noor, the Noor optic, magnificent reaction, and so much more sophisticated now, instrumentation for the working of the good. And then there are those that are not. 
And you can tell, beloved souls, as to which the vibration is working where. If it is in love and with light. To inspire. To uplift humanity. To give them hope. And love. To love all things. To change. To bring peace. These are those that have the Lemurian vibration. Those of you, beloved soul, that have chose to come from way back, beloved soul, to what is called that of the time experiences to your moment now. To come to rebirth, to pioneer, to create the golden epic, another world of peace. But you still have the opposition. The opposition is that of the Atlanteans. Now, I'm not saying to you, beloved soul, that there are not Atlanteans that have also now come into Lumerian vibration again, meaning coming back home, coming back into oneness, and coming back into peace. What I'm saying to you is you can see that one is using the destructive way of their higher levels of intelligence or what it is that they are wanting to do. If they're wanting to control man, harm man, then these are the ancient Atlanteans. Not only the Atlanteans. But it is not for me this night to speak of other beings that are on that of the earth and within that of the earth that are also equally as responsible for some of these things. There are many different species that are upon the earth that you know not of and many of you do. So I'm saying there's many, many different ways when that of lower nature, simply the negativity that is working. And why it is here. It is okay. Think about it, beloved soul. You are star seeds. You have returned to be able to birth a magnificent new world of love and life. And your initiation is you must become that love and that light and open that doorway to that inner chamber of who you be. You chose this magnificent time experiences of the you call incarnations in order to be able to go through this school. Yes, a great initiation. Just remember, every experience that you go through and you grow by, not to become the victim of, but you grow by, you are growing 10 million times fold faster than other beings throughout the universes that have chosen not to come into this school of initiation. Ever. Or at this time. The vibration is psychical. And you've had many ages. You have many ages astrologically. You have the age of Aquarius, the age of Pisces. You've had all those ages. You have what is called that of the Stone Age. You have that of the Iron Age. You have the Bronze Age. You have now the Golden Age. And there's many more. Everything is psychical. It goes through its time, beloved soul, when it's peaceful. The children playing, the old in the park resting, the laughter and the joy. There were those cycles of time when that did occur. When that of the collective of the consciousness was more peaceful. And then there was the time next of another state. When mankind then began to war. Not just to war by attacking mankind, but attack also that of the animals. Killed the animals, even killed those that were its pets. The stages, when it grows, and when it grows into that, then there is more war. 
And then it begins to grow in also the architect and the development stages when they have towers and towers of buildings. There's nothing left. Just development. Dizziness. I'm not saying, beloved soul, that there is not beautification in some of these things. There are many beautiful, beautiful architectural buildings. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that of the population where man grows through eras of time and through the different states of those eras that then begin to come where it is now. But it is also very natural because it is psychical. You see, upon that of the earth, it repeats itself over and over again because the school is for those to come to this initiation, just as you are. Some of you have chosen to come back in order to be that of the forerunners, to be able to be that of the gift in demonstration, to even be able to stand strong in what you know is your truth, to be able to stand, beloved soul, and speak out your words of truth by way of love and stand strong and not bend that of the knees to the lower nature. I am simply giving unto you, beloved souls, an understanding of how it all is, how it grows, not only to the edges of time, to the errors of time, it is just what it is. It is purposeful. Think, beloved souls, long time ago that you were through what is called the magnificence of many of the systems of life throughout the spheres. Some of you are healers, philosophers, writers, poets, Craftsmen, architects, mathematics, the mathematicians. Yes, developers, there has to be. Look at all that other eras of time. It is quite magnificent, beloved ones, but now it is more than ever. You should be so happy. You're on the last mile of the marathon, beloved soul. It's always the last mile that one runs that is the hardest. Because you're getting tired. One gets frustrated. Yes, even now, one still gets angry. You're still in the human body. You still have an emotional body. So you can't be so hard on yourself. You have to hug yourself, too. You have to love yourself. We do. We love you, beloved souls. We encourage you to continue forward. You're what counts. Every one of you that has the ability to awaken to a gift, gifts, and assist others in any way, group, singular, it does not matter. What matters, beloved soul, that you are demonstrating and you are living your purpose. You are living that part of your destiny. But you have to learn to live it in the joy, even in the midst of chaos. You have to be that sun dancer. You have to be that spark of light. You have to be that demonstration, beloved souls, even in the simplicity of being. I will say to you, more and more of you, we will become more simple. But the more simple you become, the closer you become to your Creator. Does not mean that you cannot have things. But your life and what you choose, your choices, will be vastly different. You're going to want to get more and more simpler. The way that you choose to do things, ease and grace. You know, ease and grace. That is good. To have things come to you, for you, by you, through you. 
of speaking to you about you and your everyday life. I gave this to you. The edge of Aquarius is magnificent, beloved souls, and you are that of the magnificent sparks of light. You are the ones that chose long ago to come and to be the participants, to be the strength, to be steadfast and strong in what it is you're going to choose to do in the aiding and the guiding of others, your families, yourself, helping, having the greatest of compassion, being compassionate with an open heart, Love all. Love your animals. Stand strong. Speak out. Write about these horrendous things that are happening with the injustices of man. You are the star seeds. Fear not. But be happy. You can do all this very, very simply. And with much joy, with knowledge. So I'm going to tell you a story as I end. But also remember that Elmeria was wonderful and you were part of all those chambers, the healing chambers, that are the educational chambers, the workings of aeronautics, the working of the buildings and the architecture, the magnificence of the fire tongue crystals, you all, every one of you, in this collective consciousness of this evening, beloved soul, have those abilities. You chose to come here to do this. So I'm going to end with a story, and it's a story of a mouse. And I've told this many times. There was a little mouse that always kept looking out his window. And very far away, I could see this magnificent white mountain. And I had such a yearning. It was compelled to go. So it said to that of his family, I must leave. I have to go to the top of the mountain. So it took his little knapsack and then started out and started walking down that other path. And he walked and he walked. And soon he came and there was a great big hump a great big lump of something in its path. But it was very frightened, so it jumped behind that of the mulberry bush and it heard it groan. Mm. And this magnificent said to you, mm. and the mouse got his shivering. He said, who are you? He said, oh, I'm the buffalo. What are you doing, buffalo? I am dying. Oh, the mouse was so frightened. He says, but my little brother, if you give me one of your eyes, I will not die. Oh, no, the mouse was shivering. But he looked at it and saw all the magnificence and the beauty of this buffalo. And said, oh, I cannot let it die. And it agreed. And instantaneously, the eye poked out. And the buffalo jumped up. And the buffalo said to his little friend, what is it now that I can do for you? He said, well, you see, I have to go to the top of that mountain. And I need to get there, but I can't see very well now. So the bubble said, just jump on that little cup of my fur, and I'll take you away, but I can't take you all the way. So the buffalo let him go, and he began his journey again. Again, there was another big lump in that of his path, and he jumped again behind that of the mulberry bush, and the voice said, Little mouse, I'm dying. Oh, the little mouse was really shivering because this was a wolf. And he looked at it and he said, oh, it's so beautiful. But the wolf said, I won't die if you just give me your eye. Oh, no, the mouse thought, if I give him that of my other eye, I cannot see. And I will not be able to know how to get to the top of the mountain. But he agreed. It was too beautiful. So instantaneously, I popped out, and the wolf jumped up. And he said, what can I do for you, my little brother? He says, I need to go to the top of the mountain. He said, hold on my back. I will take you to the bottom, but I can't take you to the top. And he did. Now the little mouse is climbing. Oh, he's climbing, and he's climbing, but he can't see. 
He's claiming and he falls and he scrapes out of his legs and his feet and he doesn't know what's happening and he falls back but he still keeps climbing and climbing and climbing and he falls back and he climbs again and he falls back. Now he's just exhausted. He is so tired. And finally he just collapsed in exhaustion. After a short time, he woke up and said, oh, there's something very different. I don't know what this is. He noticed that he had something to the right of himself and to the left. And now he noticed that, oh, these are wings. What has happened? The mouse awakened at the top of the mountain. Yes, he climbed that mountain in blind faith, and so is every one of you. And yes, you get tattered and torn, and you get tired, and you fall back, and you go forward, but you keep going, because that is faith. And when you get to the top of the mountain, just as a little mouse, the mouse became the eagle, that eagle, that magnificent eagle, and he did uplift himself, began to soar across out of the heavens, and he was free, and he was happy. Now each of you are becoming the angels. The more of the story, beloved souls, is you all have to give up your eyes. I this, I that, I this, I that. And you will meet those. They will ask of you to do just that. To think of them instead of self, or to aid others. But also you must think of self. But the moral of the story, beloved souls, simply that yes, you are climbing the mountain in blind faith. And you will get to the top of the mountain and you will have your wings and you will, beloved soul, of course, that's metaphoric. Mm-hmm. The wings mean you have that flotation of energy. You have that magnificent physical etheric light that surrounds and engulfs you and will carry you to your next destiny. Love the most. Be the most. Continue to climb that mountain, beloved souls. Be strong. Hold strong. Other we all from where I be will greet you. And take you, beloved souls, to such an incredible place and places that you have forgot, but are beginning to remember we will return you home. So I say this to you, beloved beings. Go forth, be about your father and mother's business. Be. Be happy. Be love. Yes, I know you're in a human body. And yes, I know that you have an emotional body. But you're learning. You're growing. Hug yourself. Touch yourself in the back. Say, I'm doing it. I'm getting there. I'm learning. Yes, you are. Go be the light. Be the dancers. I say now to you, Adonai, Adonai Basu Barogus. It is the breath of the eternal one that is within all. And within, we are all one throughout the whole of creations within creation. So go forth and be happy. So it is. So mote it be. I leave thee now.
Miss Philo, Oracle for the Archangel Michael. And you have just watched an Archangel Michael teaching by way of a lecture and read-along. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to know more about what we do, just go to our website at archangelmichaelteachings.com. Thanks for joining us.